So, okay. <laughs> Friends, we're going to run some Savage Worlds East Texas University. Line. This is our ninth session. Shane Hensley, Clint Black, thank you for the wonderful, fast, furious, and fun, in no particular order, uh, Savage Worlds rule set. East Texas University is the genre or the setting of Savage Worlds, in which we are playing a Leo Preston DuBose and Ed Wetterman big thanks for putting together um, this milieu, uh, this East Texas college setup with crazy, zany hijinks of these college students, and shenanigans, and balancing romantic relationships with studying and trying to pass their curricula, and of course, uh, the paranormal and supernatural events that just seem to be occurring. Praetor's Rejects, our YouTube uh, channel. Duff, thank you so much for uploading and managing these videos, doing the work you do, clipping them, presenting them, making them available for one and all. Uh, viewers, I gently nudge you to check out the Praetor's Rejects channel. Duff has games running. If I said five days a week, I'd probably be lying. It's probably more like six days a week. Everything from 5th edition D&D &D to uh, one-shots with uh, uh, rule sets such as Aliens, um, a couple of sessions. He runs or hosts Savage Worlds, uh, of which I'm proud to say we are, are one of such, and others as well. Other uh, little one-shot games, fundraisers, uh, if you're looking for um, uh, both breadth and depth. Uh, again, I gently nudge you towards Duff's Praetor's Rejects channel. Uh, Corey, my friend, um, I game with you about once a week you know, on our virtual gaming tabletop. Thank you so much for putting the original East Texas University class dismissed game together for us. I was a player in that game. The other three players tonight were also players, and we had a blast. And we said, you know what? It would really be nice. It would be fun. It'd be just cool to get these characters out of the old notebooks and uh, disk drives and wherever they were stored in the cloud, uh, blow the dust, you know, the virtual or real dust off of these sheets and just play them one more time. And Amai, thank you so much for the artwork. You continue, continue to entertain and astound us. Uh, I've got one article <laughs> up on the screen right now. Um, it's fun. The I three, the it. three primaries, although mere, and Erica still make guest appearances, and they're every bit as uh, focused on getting their degree um, as are the three primaries. Uh, Nightsteed, who plays Shep, also entertain us, entertains us with uh, little little sketches that he does just as we're playing, just his own rendition, his own uh, perspective of some of the things that are going on, and they are equally entertaining. I, I liken this campaign, when I describe it to my friends and co-workers and you know, other folks that I game with, who are of course also friends, I say, yeah, this is, um, you know, between just bouts of laughter, we occasionally get a little gaming in, but usually we just sit here and laugh the whole time. So with that said, let's dive right in. We are in um, sort of the second chapter of an adventure that I think Ed Wetterman wrote, and I'm going to verify that just by turning to the front sheet, and I'm right. Well, I'm only right once a session. That's my time, guys. So uh, you're on your own after this. Last rites of the of the Black Guard. Excuse me. Last rites of the Black Guard. I mean, undead, haunting, spectral spirits, and Nazis all rolled together into one uh, adventure. I mean. What more could one ask for? Am I right? So we finished up chapter one. We ended up with a seance of the house of one Lisa Gray, a uh, single mom with two uh, small children, six and seven, Matthew and Marissa. And is this the picture? This is who I visualize in my head when I think of Lisa Gray, Pine Box Attorney. She looks an awful lot like Laura Dern. From perhaps, dare I say it, 30 years ago? I will say 25, will lie a little bit. Um, <laughs> 25 years ago. So Like 96? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I could do the math, but I choose not to. <laughs> and her, uh, her, yeah, her small children, Matthew and Marissa. At present, the study group has found them at the back door of that nice Mr. Man's house. That, that nice old man who always kept to himself, but he was friendly with a wave and a smile, always decorated his house um, for, for all the holidays and just gave away not only the best candy, but the most candy, especially to the kids um, that he recognized around the neighborhood. And let me bring up the map of Heimbrunner's house, and I'll share it. And using fantasy grounds, I will. add a layer of grid to it because it looks as if I have not. And let me uh, yeah, let me give them a sneak peek out and we'll toggle the mask mode. The masked man. Try not to give away try not to give away that little that little quick glimpse that the players might have got of the house <laughs> probably makes sense since they've been Sort of, maybe if they haven't gone all the way around 360 degrees, they've at least covered 270 degrees of this house. <laughs> they know like where the windows are and the layout. And this is the first floor. It is a two-story structure. Attractive. Um, it looks like, although the uh, the uh, the flowers in the gardens around the uh, under the window sills and and the bushes that are growing at one time um, were fairly nice, but they look a little withered. Um, perhaps a little bit uh, ignored, not well, not well tended to. And I'll pop open a, uh, just a region of the house that they can see. There it is. They snuck around the back door, opened it up, found it open, found it ajar, strangely enough. And just as a, just a little, uh, rehash of where we got towards the end of the last session. Um, there was a figure in the dining room window looking out that they saw briefly with uh, really good notice rolls. I think a notice roll with at least a raise, possibly two. They did see a, a shorter um, form of a female, perhaps with some sort of low light device in her hand, uh, trying to mask her illumination. Um, so, in all probability, they are not alone in this house. And I'd be remiss not to mention the fact that there are probably um, spirits out and about, as Shep, with his, his prenatural sense, his, his precognitive ability, and his sort of psychic sensitivity, has also sensed that all is not as it appears to be. This whole house, as his spirit garden has indicated, is covered with a, a thick blanket of dark fog, was the best way she could put it. I'm going to quickly reset some bennies. Yeah. And since there are originally five characters, the three are playing, I'm going to take away two of my bennies. Try to even the playing field. I have three bennies and any of my adversaries or possible friends of the study group will each get a benny or two if they are wild cards. Uh, my friends, you are about to enter uh, the house of... Um, of Mr. Mann's. Now, what was Mr. Mann's first name? Ah, you know, I, I think it may have been William or Frederick, but we know him as Heinglimmer, the uh, Nazi Frank. doctor. Heinglimmer. Frank Mann's. Frank Mann's. Frank Mann's. I was close with Frederick, but he was a, uh, a torturer, a uh, 
um, an evil, twisted man who experimented on his uh, on his subjects, um, as well as a depraved mind that just um, enjoyed you know tormenting and starving um, the individuals uh, in his concentration camp. Escaped to Argentina after the war, and some way managed to probably with forged documents or perhaps some sort of magical charms, um, entered the United States and settled down for the remainder of his days in Pine Box, Texas. An avid fisherman he was, and also a professional baseball fan. Bennies are reset. Uh, I think we should draw a curse card for our friend Shep, who has the curse hindrance. And every session, in some small way, something happens. So as I bring up the tools, and I bring up the cards. Let's see, last time, was it last time you were sick? Or was that two yeah. times ago? Uh, I think it was two, two times, times ago. Two, yeah. Last time, I think it was uh, minus two on vigor rolls to resist hazards. I'm just yeah. curious. If I click on this and it comes up a three, then I think that's left over from the last roll. No, it's a fresh roll. It is a ten. Oh, my goodness. What are you holding in your hands now, Shep? At the moment, I have no idea. Because <laughs> we'll we were sneaking the last time I remember. Yes, but I do remember that when you started off getting ready to visit Lisa Gray, Pine Box attorney, single mom, who had hired you to come and, and try to ferret out because of the haunting, which was affecting all three of them, her and Matthew, but especially, especially little seven-year-old Marissa. You guys were um, going full bore. You were loaded to bear. I remember you had squirt guns of holy water. Oh, I remember yeah. you had <laughs> yeah. um, a, 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 a wrought iron slingshot made of an old photo frame, or perhaps the solid frame of an old mirror with the central reflective surface removed um, to use as a, a staunch um, a slingshot yeah. for little little bags, yeah. little little soft paper bags of salt. Um Yep. Various cold iron uh, edifices are borne by the party. I want to say perhaps a crowbar and an old rusty tire iron, which you were yeah. able to uh, to clean up and, and get some of the rust off of it. So your, your curse is a 10. Technology completely fails this session. <laughs> um, you know, I was going to say that's, that's, that's terrible because it's, it's pitch black, but for the moonlight and perhaps the ambient glow of Heimglimmer, i.e. Frank Manz's you know, microwave oven, right? Uh, perhaps a digital display in another room. Um, technology fails the session. But then on the other hand, you have successfully managed to cast upon yourselves, young people, the dark sight ritual. Right. So you have yeah. a duration of see in the dark, almost like night vision goggles. Um, so perhaps it is not quite as bad as one would expect. Technology fails this session. See the anti-technology hindrance. That's basically a D6 when you try to activate something. I think on a on like a roll of a or a roll of a one or a two or a roll of a six, it functions yeah. normally. Or on a three or a four, it fails and you have to reset it. And maybe it's a one or a two that it's damaged and it takes, you know, a, a D2 plus one hour to fix it and requires some repair parts or, or some such nonsense like that. So not a good one when you're sneaking around, but I, it could be much uh, worse. It could be much worse. <laughs> Luckily, right now, <laughs> We're just sneaking. I don't need yeah. technology to cast. <laughs> okay. We'll start with Ava. Ava, what do you have in your hands? Mm. 
she is the one that has the makeshift slingshot for the mm-hmm. salt bags. Mm-hmm. And Sophia gave her one of those little one-handed water gun pistols filled with holy water. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she has pepper spray on her. She has her bag with her, which has <laughs> has her laptop and her gold flake vial, honey, and she has her little Tamagotchi and okay. the salt bombs. Is a Tamagotchi dangling from a belt lapel or is it tucked away safely, like in a safe a safe zipper compartment? No, she has it dangling off of her belt loop. <laughs> That she just pushes into her pocket. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, before you go there, Shep already knows not to touch the Tamagotchi. She slapped him before. <laughs> oh, as well, she should. No, she hasn't. <laughs> Little Ava. Tamagotchi slapped. is like puppy status. <laughs> you don't go there. Is that a Tamagotchi in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? <laughs> does a Tamagotchi is that is that a purely visual or does it does it chirp and beep and whir? If you don't turn off the sound, I think it does. I have little I remember, sounds. I remember like, music. Okay. Yeah, like when and it if, beeps. if it's yeah, like if it's if it's hungry, I think. Yeah, don't they yell at you when they're hungry? Yeah, mm-hmm. if it's hungry, it will make a little <laughs> chirping sound at you. I but see. I see. If you if you turn off the sound, it doesn't do that. But I'm gonna leave that up to shenanigans, Dean. <laughs> well, you know, when you have somebody who's cursed that's walking in close <laughs> proximity to you, and he's got the anti-technology curse, and exactly. things tend to be boogered, and um, and it, and it really is no surprise. I'll let you know this for free. Some of the the spirits here. Um, or some of the spirits in, in this in this menu in this uh, in this genre of play have little psychic abilities. They can uh, like poltergeists and geists and atmospheric ball of energy. They can raise or lower temperatures in, in a five or ten foot radius. They can evoke a smell, a scent, um, closely affiliated with either them how they died. Like if they died in a fire, you might smell burning flesh or smoke. Um, or, or a scent that they really enjoyed while they were alive. What are the other things they can do? They can cause, some of the more powerful ones can cause a burn um, to appear upon one's body as if touched by a, you know, like a hot fireplace poker. Um, a certain um, audio effects, you know, little ringing bells or things like that. Or they can cause electronic items to drain of energy or to go on the fritz. And that's only in this uh, Savage Worlds rule set. That's only about maybe a fourth, maybe more like a fifth of the powers that some of these uh, supernatural entities um, can possess and manifest themselves. So, okay. Ava will say you have your... um, your squirk on at the ready. At the ready, it's probably in a, like a ridiculous plastic holster on your belt that it came uh, with. Oh yes! Like a I probably a bright that. yellow and orange super soaker emblazoned uh, holster that's no more than like two pieces of vinyl sort of glue stitched together to form like a little pouch. It's um, for kids, and she's so small; it fits perfectly. Well, sure. Um, you know, it's, it's probably not as secure as a good leather holster of a sidearm, but for purposes such as these should be just fine. So you probably have the pepper spray tucked away somewhere where you can grab it, but probably not, um, in one of your hands right now. Maybe Um, one of her butt pockets. Yeah. Shep, is that true? Does she have one of those in her her back pockets? (laughs) You see a Pro- bulge back there? <laughs> probably so. I'm going to say that you probably are, are nestling one of those uh, nice um, brown paper balls tied with twine filled with Morton salt in one hand, and you're sort of carrying under your arm this square um, wrought iron frame with the sort of diagonal uh, stretchy piece of rubber, possibly a belt, a drive belt from 
from a vehicle, from an automobile, or maybe a, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe a lawnmower to give, to give you that, that part of the slingshot that you, the sling part of it, essentially. Yeah. Like a, ooh, or like a bicycle, yeah. uh, what do you call it? those bicycle, um, chains, rubber things, not a chain, a rubber thing on a bicycle and the tire to keep it nice and plump. Oh wait, no, okay, those the... are not as stretchy as I. Never mind. <laughs> that could probably that could probably do in a pinch, right? On um, a tube, Maybe. you mean like a tube? Yeah, I think the bike tube. Yeah, perhaps you found one of those, but it was sort of dry rotted, and you tossed it aside and said no. But but <laughs> this this here this belt um, it looks to be just the right size, and it even had a uh, you know holes at either end that you could help affixed with a piece of wire or perhaps like an S hook um, securely uh, from that. So Sophia, tell me as you're walking, what do you have in your hands as the Frank man's house beckons you to come in? She would definitely have the super soaker out and ready to use. Okay. That's super soaker. No time for these ghosts. That's right. Yes. And glorious you probably had three quarters of a gallon of holy water given by father gene michaels a three uh good size mason jar like um jars full of holy water i say probably one of those jars filled up the super soaker i think it gives you i'd have to look it up i think it gives you a solid six shots are the other two holy water, I'll call them flasks, but they're actually mason jars. Did you leave them at home? Did you bring them with you in that form? Did you bring them but transport them in a uh, less breakable container? I'll let you decide that before you take that first step in. I'm trying to imagine how she would carry all this because she likes to bring her backpack with her. Because, you know, you never know what you, when you need something, when you need it. Right. But the super soaker has a a thing in the back, doesn't it? Uh, the big old... Like the reservoir? Like the yeah, bulb? The one, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the one we found. It has a strap that you can, you can wear it high to low across your shoulder on your back. Or you could even strap it to your front for, uh, for ease of use. But you would have to free it up, either up over your head or under your arm to give you an opportunity to aim it? Yeah, I'd say she only brought one of those jars just so she's not weighed down Okay, by what she already has. So you've got about, let's see, a gallon has, what, 128 ounces? So you've got about a, um, about a, about a quart of water in the super soaker and about a quart of water in a glass jar in your backpack. And of course, I mean, you guys are bright students of various um, study study areas. You probably wrap it up, wrap it up in foam or something like that. Oh yeah, newspaper or, or something. A, a scarf. You know, you want to you want you want to protect that. Uh, uh, if you drop this backpack, it may shatter, but at least against the casual bump, you would think it would uh, be stalwart enough to to, to stave off breakage inside your um, backpack. And when you were pouring this carefully, probably, again, using some sort of a funnel that you found under the house or in that built-in shed area, an old funnel you cleaned out, this holy water smells rather nice. It seems to be scented with perfumed oils, and it has a little bit of a shimmer, as if there is like some sort of chromium or perhaps silver flakes that have been added to it. So well, that's pretty. If, if, you, if you touch a little bit of it, it's, it's just a little bit slippery. It just leaves a little bit of that. Say you had a soap bubble pop on your hand, yeah. on your fingertips. It just, it just looks a little bit like that. And it's a, just the slightest bit slippery. Um, just as an aside, it's really neither, okay. he, neither here nor there. Just a little, <laughs> uh, a little, little side description of what you've purchased from uh, Father Michaels for a nice deduction to the, to the poor box to help. Uh, the downtrodden and the hungry of Pine Box, Texas, a small town near the big thicket, which is the United States' last 
jungle. It is actually the last thing that is classified as a jungle in its oh, area, wow. the big thicket. And it sits right on the border between um, eastern Texas and western Louisiana. I went so. to the wrong place for school. <laughs> so, okay. A, a super soaker. You're going to carry this two-handed like you're not afraid of no ghosts? Or are you mm -hmm. carrying it one-handed and something in your other hand? Or do you have it strapped to you, leaving both hands free? I'm just... Uh, she's holding it in both hands. Okay. Does, one, doesn't want to lose it. Indeed. Understood. Yeah. And Shep, finally, what are you carrying? Both on your person uh, and in your hands. On my person, I would have my slingshot since uh, Ava has her own now. Mm -hmm. um, Hers is bigger than yours. Do you have like slingshot that, envy? No. <laughs> no. But uh, I also would have made some of the, taken some of the off pieces of the coat iron, of iron. Mm -hmm. to use for slingshot material hmm. and i would have had the uh tire iron i'd be carrying the tire iron okay let's see cold when i think of cold iron um i think of a cold chisel about a foot long i think of old iron spikes used to used to build the railroad you know to connect the east coast and the west coast by railway. I think of tire iron. I think of fireplace implements, the pokers and the little, sh the little shovels, um, the, the like clamps that you use to grab something mm -hmm. and pick it up and move yeah. it. I think of, I think of a crowbar. I think of a big pry bar. Um, I'm okay. trying to think of what there might be that's cold that you could use to fire. And unless you can come up with a clever, reason, a clever way to make cold iron propellant, um, ordinance, if you will, or you want to spend a Benny, of course, um, I'd like to know how you propose to come up with cold iron ordinance. Uh, I just, there would be bits and pieces that would have uh, rusted off of the, the various iron components that were out in that shed. That's what I was going with. Uh, but if I have to spin a Benny, then they're going to be really, really, really old-fashioned jacks. Okay. Oh, snap. Drop me a Benny. Let the Bennies hit the... Um, I got door. kicked out, so okay. you can take oh, one no! from me. And for those of you who are watching that are that are new or only, you know, somewhat familiar with Savage Worlds, the benefit ship or Benny is a it's it's a it's a minor way that the characters can influence the game in their favor in any number of ways. They let you um, recover from being shaken during combat, for example. Um, but one of the one of the, my favorite ways that you can use a Benny is to say, you know what, I, I need something, or I want something, or I have something. In this case, Shep wants something that's cold iron that he can use in his um, slingshot. So at the cost, the cheap, low, low, one-time, low, low cost of a Benny, dropping him to two, I'm going to say that he came up with the idea of finding some old uh, an old piece of furniture, perhaps an old bureau or a chest of drawers, and he took it apart, disassembled it, and we'll say it was you know um, made by the Amish or something like that where a lot of the a lot of the adjoining nails and brads were handmade. And what he has done is he has affixed these sharpened at one end, he sharpened the other end, maybe visited Paul Vanderhorn and used his grinder, or had Paul Vanderhoor grind for him um, the other end of the nails to a fine point. So he took three of these, put them together, and then just joined them together with maybe some sort of uh, Sophia's art clay, 
that goes on nice and soft and uh, malleable, but once it dries, it's, it's, it's fairly vigorous. So what you've effectively made are some six-point cow troughs, some six-point jacks, and we'll say you have um, two plus... I'll be nice. I was going to say a D4. I'm a kind, benevolent dean, and I will, I will give you a 2 plus a D6 of these. So you have five of these. So you can keep Thank track. You. Once this clay dries, it hardens. Um, there's a chance that upon using it, it could break. You could still recover the iron bits, of course. But But yeah. We'll say you have five of those. Slingshot in one hand, probably carrying both the slingshot and the um, the item, the uh, the caltrop, if you will, the jack in one mm -hmm. hand, and probably using the other hand to swing the door open or such. So it can be a, often a good idea to have one hand free. And although we're not in a combat, I'm going to pop open the combat tracker. I am going to. Wow, last fight was round 11. Um, hmm. That was probably 10 rounds of fighting the zombies at the Quiet Villa's rest home. And then one round, which wasn't really combat, where I simply wanted everybody on the combat um, grid. So we'll set that back to round no, one. I think that was round? 11 rounds of trying to go up and down that silly... Oh, the imps. The imps on the water <laughs> yeah. tower the imp stuff because <laughs> we were stuck on that water tower for a very long time <laughs> that imp played no games oh no and just for keeping me on my toes Shep there's that Benny back for, for out remember <laughs> anytime you can out remember the Dean it's going to be a good game <laughs> uh, let's see how do, how do I go uh, let's see about delete, deleting all these um, folks from the combat tracker well, I don't need to delete the player characters. All I really need to do is delete the tokens or the NPCs. So let's see, there's a trash button, delete combatants, and that deletes one of them at a time. I'm sure there's a way to do that. Uh, What's this little box? You don't box? have a, a right click where you can delete all non friendlies? No, it's just delete combatants. But I selected, mm -hmm. maybe if I just, right now. If I right-click, but I'm not on a, a slot on the combat tracker, it just lets me minimize or dismiss the dialogue. But if I right-click on Lisa Gray, it gives me the little trash can. And it says, mm -hmm. delete combatant. I guess I could have shift-clicked. I, I bet I could have shift-selected um, a couple of them. But that's okay. Ooh. There were only three of them. And those, those Grays, they're such nice people. They're really, really salty earth. And such a shame that... Um, Lisa's husband, Bill, uh, died overseas, probably in Afghanistan. Um, although, in mm -hmm. fact, it was uh, the a cancer got him. Ate him up from the inside. Mm -hmm. um, she's sure that it was something that he encountered while over in that, in that theater of war that uh, had that, that effect on him. So let's see. Set back to round one. Everybody's on the combat tracker. And now that you're on the combat tracker, I believe I can simply just drag yuns and drop yuns. Right on the grid. Alrighty. This is the the entrance floor of a two story house. You see, you see that lady up there. And Ava, did I um did I lose you? Did I manage to lose you somehow? Oh uh, no. Or did I drop you on, too close to somebody else? I I am not on the map. <laughs> well, we we'll have, we'll have to remedy that immediately. There okay. I am. You seem to be now. And I do apologize. How rude. How rude of me <laughs> to not add you. She's you very tiny, easily overlooked. Yep. 
So you are you are looking. You've entered entered the room using your dark sight ritual, which was the first mm -hmm. time that you would cast such magics. But I must say, um, it took less than less than ten seconds. It took less than about or less than twelve seconds, probably ten seconds, um, to get the magical effect uh, to manifest. It was well done. Success with raises. The dice were very kind to you. Yeah. You're looking at a fireplace from the inside. You know the chimney is just on the outside. Uh, Sophia, you are looking into a. Um, it appears to be a bathroom. Mask, turn on mask mode. Okay. Let's see if I can cover such all right this is a living room spaciously but sparsely decorated there is an entertainment center mm -hmm. you can see it looks like the top of a tv right by that curved balcony or that curved banister there's a tv set an impressive sound system dominating this entertainment center um, lining the center racks of music cd There's a small brown couch. There's a faded leather recliner facing the TV and entertainment setting. There are two pictures on the wall. One is a painting of a just a handsome young blonde boy looking upward at the sky, wonder in his eyes. The other is a picture of the 1969 New York Mets following the World Series win. So picture um, the, the team spilling out of the dugout arms upraised uh, in victory. And there is a caption stenciled on the bottom that says, you gotta believe. There's a small fireplace on that, on that back wall right next to the door, which easily swung open to provide you um, entry. Is that egress or is egress when you leave? I don't know. I digress, maybe. <laughs> There's a closet uh, next to the front door. We could hang up stuff. Okay. You could, there's an exit, two doors, and a uh, and just a, an exit. And you are actually um, looking out at the front door, which you know to be taped off on the outside on that front porch. So that dotted line, you can ignore that. It is, if you look up, there's a balcony above you. So it's open air all the way up to the, uh, you know, to the slightly slanted ceiling, two stories above you. There is a set of stairs that leads up. Up or down? Oh. Up. So it says down there because you're on the down side <laughs> of the stairs, I suppose. Um, mm. But yeah, that's about what you see. There are two doors. They appear to be um, closed. We'll say the closet door is just hanging open a little bit. The article said there was a secret room. It did. I'm There's hoping a... <laughs> it's easy to find. There's a dining room. <laughs> Through the dining room, you see across Someone the else street. Someone else found it first. Yes. Across the street, you see a um, the lights on and at the flickering of a TV. It looks like that businessman is probably still watching TV, although his front drapes are drawn. They are a little bit sheer. Perhaps he's got heavy curtains and then just like uh, blinds, and maybe the blinds have just been drawn. So you can still sort of see in. Um, like I said, that the front door uh of course leads to the outside and it's roped off with yellow police scene do not cross tape and that sign on the front door that you know said this is part of a a, a multi-country um, investigation looks like uh sophia you are bypassing the um dining room and you're looking into um, a small but but immaculately yeah. kept kitchen. There is a uh, a china closet 
It's kind of like partially your fig your character uh, token is sort of sitting over it. But that that oh, square there is a china closet, and it looks like someone has come come in here with an attempt to. I'm going to call it a combination of pack everything and categorize everything. For you see a few uh, memo pads with some hastily scrawled items, like listed. And this china cabinet, one of the doors is open, and it looks like some of the fine china has been removed, and it is sitting on the um, table, as well as cardboard boxes, some of which have been you know, folded up and taped open, ready to load. Some of them are like still flat. Like they probably, someone brought it, brought in, um, you know, a, a 20 pack of these things wrapped with one of those sturdy um, ribbons and has maybe leaned them up against the wall. And some of the boxes have been put together with tape. So if you can imagine someone was packing to move, that's kind of the feel you get from this. Although the memo pads seem to indicate, you know, numbers and counts of items that um, that have been found. And let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, Shep, you notice that the, uh, the CDs uh, by the TV are mostly uh, German, and they look like they are CDs of music. You do see, I'm going to say, Brahms and Bach. Um, represented a lot more than some of the other uh, artists, but a lot of the printing seems to be in German. Although the names of the of the composers you can you can easily read just by going sort of down. Looks like they're categorized by uh, by name. And again, there are a couple of boxes, empty boxes stacked in front of the entertainment center, and a small number of CDs have been placed into a box. <clears throat> Ava, from where you're standing, this door easily swings open. Just let me know that outside is that outside is the green. But that door that opens up to like a sitting room. It's an office. There's a small library uh, consisting of what you would say is several hundred books. In fact, that, that line that goes all the way around the perimeter is in fact bookshelves. It reminds you a little bit of um, Lisa Gray's study, how, how she had just numerous law journals, magazines, records, um, previous court documents, uh, case volumes, um, you know, encyclopedia, etc. It's very similar. It gives you that kind of feel. Bookshelves cover every wall. Um, the room's furniture consists of a small recliner and an end table. While these books were mostly law-related, this deals mostly with World War II. Although generally there are many, many conflicts represented amidst the many, many novels and tomes and historical books, hardback, softback, magazines. Um, World War II seems to be the predominant subject of these books. Interesting. So you're just kind of taking it all in. And yeah, you know, with this, this dark site, this is hecka cool, right? You're... Uh, you're almost able. No you're able. To, awesome. You're able to kind of see the, you know, you can see the titles of the books without even having any light. You like this. And do any of these books seem to stand out in particular? Ava is thinking of her video game self finding something out of place that could potentially lead to a secret room. Well, I'll tell you what. It says to make a notice roll at minus one, but I'll say. <laughs> Make a notice roll at straight up plus zero, since that gaming background of yours. A six. a six is a success. In Savage Worlds, a four is generally your target number for success. Combat is different, uh, but for just um, noticing something, hearing something, um, 
persuading, maybe persuading someone who is ambivalent, you know, neither uh, uh, negative or positive, um, to give over some information or perhaps do something that would not cause them any harm. These, these, these sorts of things, target number of a four would be a success. And Ava rolled a six. So certainly you do, certainly you do. As you're going down, you're like, you know, the great uh, you know, Rommel, the desert fox, um, the, the battles uh, over Egypt and the desert, you know, the, the desert war and this and that, and Normandy and you know, the plans here and the, and the moves of Hitler's um, armed forces into, uh, into the Soviet Republic. Um, there was one that stands out as being odd because it is handwritten along the, um, the, the binding um, of the book where you would see the, the title. And it is one that is on a shelf that has not yet been categorized or listed. As again, there's probably a pair of memo pads somewhere in this room, probably in an empty space where books had been removed, categorizing uh, the titles and the, um, we'll say the year of publication and the publisher. Um, some of these books are recent enough to have ISBN numbers. Some of them do not. But what strikes you is this one book seems to have hieroglyphics running up and down the boundary. And it, just like you said, the MacGuffin, if you will, it just stands <laughs> out. It um, it doesn't fit. Uh, before I touch it, I want to call the others. <laughs> Shep. Sophia, I found a weird book. I think it could lead to something secret because all the games I play always have a secret room with a weird level hidden in it. So, I'm going to touch it and maybe it'll do something. <laughs> awesome. Be prepared. I don't know what may or may not happen. <laughs> I point my super soaker at the book. Okay. I, I want to do the thing where they'll pull it <laughs> by the spine and see if anything happens. Now, now, do you, do you know, like, when, say, one of your parents has kept, like, an old book, maybe from one of their, their classes in school, and at some point the binding is cracked and it's been scotch taped, but the scotch tape over years becomes yellow and brittle? It, uh, yeah. It's yeah. a little. Yeah. It's a little. It's a little bit like that. Um, oh, but again, yeah. it, you can clearly see, um, perhaps like fountain pen ink, or perhaps a calligraphy brush, um, hieroglyphics up and down the binding. You reach out and you touch it. Sophia, super soaker at ready. Yeah, ships joining Sophia in the uh, Charlie's Angels pose with his <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> with, his shot, with his little uh, slingshot. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to yank the. Uh, I'll start pulling on this thing slowly since it looks really brittle mm -hmm. and uh, see if there's anything that happens or if something something from it stands out even more. Um, I mean, you pull it out, it is in your one hand, you're holding it gingerly perhaps um, you know, half an arm's length away from your body as you view it. Uh, the title seems to be written in German. I mean, it feels like a book. It smells like a musty kind of a book. It weighs about as much of a book as it should, and it appears to be, again, aged and somewhat brittle. There's no hole behind where it was sitting. Can I see right? Like, can I see the I, the spot on the shelf where it was sitting at? Anything behind sure. it? Sure. I mean, it it probably it left, of course, a naked, empty slot where you extracted it, and there are books on either sides of it. And these weren't very closely packed, but they were close enough that the two books, you know, remain remain upright. And you you peer okay. in, and you do see, um, like the wooden wall of the paneling of the house. It looks like these shelves were installed. But they were not. They don't have a back to them, so they are just okay. the horizontal shelving, but not units that have a like a different colored back than the rest okay. of the, the the wood. As there are areas that are not shelved um, mm. in here. Okay. Well, 
Nothing happened around us. No spoopy ghosts have come out yet. So I think that we could just keep this at hand for now, friends. Okay. Oh, uh, let's let's see what else we find. It did, and and whatever that lady was doing, I don't know if she is a police officer or whatnot, but maybe let's avoid running into her. Yeah. I haven't seen her. Okay. Wait. In the where? dining room or the kitchen, she might be upstairs. Shep had a vision, right? Oh. Did this lady? This lady was in that vision, wasn't it? Could it be the same lady? Oh God, I want. Uh, I want so I much. I don't think I got a good enough view, as from what I remember, I was told when I tried to determine that. I, I'm, I'm that going to be entirely die here. I'm going to be entirely no. non-politically correct. I'm going to say, well, <laughs> you probably find her in the laundry room, but you all would, you all would, you all would hate me if I said that. It's, it's definitely not. <laughs> yeah, so said I'll, it. I'll keep that you to myself. Um, <laughs> I'm that sure. It? You know, I mean, but Chef, you, you you had a tremendous spirit role. Um, when you had that vision, that precognitive sense, that 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 yeah. dreamlike state, um, you had a fair enough view of her that you could you could describe her to your friends much in the way that I described mm -hmm. her to you. And if you say something that's wrong, I'll I'll let you know that um, you're misremembering and it's some minor detail. What I do you remember? Uh, I remember a uh, brunette, young brunette lady with a ponytail. Um, and she was shooting things. Okay. And she was clothed in? Apparently, I did not consider that... Um, Looks like desert Worthy desert for camo. Me to take a note desert camo. Desert fatigues. Okay. Perhaps if you look from a certain angle, it does look like those leafy patterns, but they were all in like khakis and tans. Yeah. And yeah, ponytail, sort of brown, okay. uh, you know, golden hair, brownish hair with a sort of like blonde streaks, some highlights in them, and large, soulful, brown eyes. About five, 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 six. Looked pretty fit. Yeah. But I don't think, if I remember right, you said we didn't see the person that was in this house well enough for me to tell if it looked like her. Is that right? The height and build matches. Okay. And Ava for uh, for finding my little hidden gem there. I'll toss a Benny into your tray. Thanks. You're still I looking. I have this book in my uh, possession. <laughs> is it is it a big book or is it small enough where she would be able to stash it in the oversized hoodie pockets that she's got? <laughs> Probably too big for the hoodie pocket. Okay. Keeping it at hand then. Or is it not fragile enough to be able to open it? Do you want to risk opening it? I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm wondering. I was like, mm, it's got a bunch of Egyptian stuff on it. That's some Scooby Doo shenanigans waiting to happen. <laughs> I will I will let her use her gaming habits to be against opening the book. <laughs> okay. I'll wait till I'm back in town. I'll wait till there's a healer nearby. <laughs> okay. Certainly you um Ginger... But she will keep it with her. Um say you place it in your uh you say your backpack has a, a large backpack area. But also a smaller, a bag, yeah, so. a smaller pocket that that zips and is about large enough for, say, a um, a tablet, and that seems to be a reasonable side to keep it, you know, isolated from, you know, the rest of your gear and stuff. Yeah. 
and you zip it deftly shut. Zip, zip, zip. Um, everybody else, um, uh, a notice roll. I would like a suite of notice rolls, each at minus two. And by typing two. typing that minus two down in the parchment area of the user interface, it's probably oh, a good so way to go. Ava included? Yes, please. Okay. Minus two. Notice. Oh, holy! That's about what I expected. Oh, holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> oh. Oh. Goodness gracious. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs>